Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be working on, oh, I'm in the wrong thing. We are going to be working on um, narratives and specifically personal narratives, okay? So uh, what we've been doing with our picture prompts, those are narratives, um, but we're going to be focusing as we go forward with a personal narrative. So it's something that comes specifically from you. All right, it's about your experiences. And um, you're gonna really engage the reader in some twists and turns and emotions and really take your reader as we start writing on a roller coaster ride. All right, so using the raft method, who is going to be, who's this going to be about? It's going to be about yourself and you're going to be writing it. The format that we're using, we've done expository, um, and we've done uh, persuasive writing, and now we're moving on pers to personal narratives. Your audience is going to be your peers and your teachers, and the topic is an experience that taught you something. Remember, I asked you to uh, think about um, a lesson that you've learned throughout your life, so keep thinking about that, because right now we're in the pre-writing stage. All right, your goal is to write a personal narrative about an interesting personal experience, something that taught you something. And the three main, or the, 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 the major areas that we're going to be focusing on are the organization of your writing, um, your voice, word choice, sentence fluency, and conventions. Now, I typed every, all the notes in here for you, so you don't need to do that. You have these. So the ideas that you want in your personal narratives, don't include things that aren't pertinent, that aren't relevant. You want the most important details. And again, we're not telling everyone that happens. We want to show them and really engage our readers. We want to make them know more and wonder what's happening next. All right, organization. I think this is an area we've really improved on. Um, we should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. We should have paragraphs. They should be organized. Again, we've come a long way here. Voice. Some of you are still having a hard time with voice. Um, so others, I can hear you speaking to me through your writing, even though you're, you're a way, way far away from me. Um, so remember, we said when you when you write, you might try writing as though you're you're speaking to someone. It should be that easy. You that's and that's going to help you develop your own style. Word choice. Um, personal narratives are very heavy on emotion, so you want to really have your reader feeling those emotions, and you can do that with figurative language. We've worked a lot with figurative language, so we'll be reviewing that again. All right, sentence fluency. There's just a few of you that are either just all the time using real short, top, choppy sentences, and then there's some of you that your whole piece is one run-on sentence. Remember, we want to keep this interesting to the reader. If you use short, choppy sentences all the time, that's not very interesting. One long um, run-on sentence, that's confusing. So make sure you vary the sentence structure, and that will also help engage your reader. All right, conventions. I can't believe I'm having to say this. I know that we're working rem remotely, but that does not mean that you stopped using punctuation, correct punctuation, capitalization at the beginnings of sentences um, for proper nouns. And guys, the pronoun I, when you use that, it's capitalized. We don't stop just because we're working remotely. And of course, spelling is important and you wanna use proper grammar. You'll see that there's a place in today's story where um, they kind of use some, some slang and they do that for a reason, all right? So today, what you are going to be doing is your, I did slide one for you. Thank you, Mrs. Healy. You're welcome. Um, you're going to be doing the narrative reflection. And I'm going to be reading a story for, to you, The Bike by Gary Soto. And I want you to, as, we're, as I'm reading this, because you're going to be filling this in later, be thinking about 
Does this focus on just one spirit experience or an event? Does it contain dialogue between the characters? Does it make the you, you or the reader want to know what happened to this person? All right. L listen for a hook to, to grab you and get you more interested. Um, what kind of engaging techniques does this um, writer use uh, to keep you interested? What, what specifically, what, what style do they use? Um, and why do you think the author wrote this personal narrative? So now you'll be doing this later on. Um, I did page one for you. All right, right now I want you to kind of follow along with me. We are going to be reading the personal narrative from Gary Soto. It's from his personal experience and it's called The Bike. All right, and you'll see he has the, the title capitalized. My first bike got me nowhere. Through the shadow I cast as I pedaled, raced along my side. The leaves of bird-filled trees stirred a warm breeze and litter scuttled out of the way. Our orange cats looked on from the fence, their tails up like antennas. I opened my mouth and wind tickled the back of my throat. When I squinted, I could see past the end of my block. My hair flicked like black fire, and I thought I was pretty cool riding up and down the block, age five, <clears throat> in my brother's hand-me-down shirt. Going up and down the block was one thing, but taking the first curve out of sight of mom in the house was another. I was scared of riding on Sarah Street. Mom said hungry dogs lived on that street, and red anger lived in their eyes. Their throats were hard with extra bones from biting kids on bikes, she said. But I took the corner anyway. I didn't believe mom. Once she had said that pointing at a rainbow caused freckles. And after a rain had moved and drenched the streets, after sparrows flitted onto the lawn, a rainbow washed over the junkyard and reached the dark barrels of Coleman pickles. I stood at the window. I looking out, amazed and devious with the devilish horns of my butch haircut standing up. From behind the window, I let my finger slowly uncurl like a bean plant rising from the earth. I uncurled it and curled it back and made a fist. I should remember this day, I told myself. I pedaled my squeaky bike along the curve onto Sarah Street, but I returned immediately. I braked and looked back at where I'd gone. My face was hot, my hair sweaty, but nothing scary seemed to have happened. The street had looked like our street, parked cars, tall trees, a sprinkler hissing on a lawn, and an old woman bending over her garden. I started again and again. I rode the curve, my eyes open as wide as they could go. After a few circle eights, I returned to our street. There ain't no dogs, I told myself. I began to think that maybe this was like one of those false rainbow warnings. I turned my bike around and rode a few times in front of our house, just in case mom was looking for me. I called out, hi mom, I haven't gone anywhere. I saw her face in the window, curlers piled high, and she waved a dish towel at me. I waved back. When she disappeared, I again tore my bike around the curve onto Sarah Street. I was free. The wind flicked my hair and cooled my ears. I did figure eights, rode up the curbs and onto the lawns, bumped into trees and rode over a garden hose a hundred times because I liked the way the water sprang up from the sprinkler after the pressure of my tires. I stopped when I saw a kid my age come down a porch. His, his machinery for getting around was a tricycle. Big baby, I thought, and said, you can run over my leg with your trike if you want. I laid down on the sidewalk and the kid with his fingers in his mouth said, okay. He backed up and slowly 
like a tank, advance. I folded my arms behind my head and watched a jay swoop by with what looked like a cracker in its beak. When the tire climbed over my ankle and sparks of pain cut through my skin, I sat up quickly, my eyes flinging tears like a sprinkler. The boy asked, did it hurt? No, I said, almost crying. The kid could see that it did. He could see that my face strained to hold back a sob, two tears dropping like dimes into the dust. He pedaled away on his bucket of bolts and tossed it on his front lawn. He looked back before climbing the stairs and disappearing into the house. I pulled up my pants leg, my ankles purple, large and hot, and my skin was flaked like wood shavings. I patted spit into it and laid back down. I cried because no one was around, the tears stirring up a lather on my dirty face. I rose to my feet and walked around, trying to make the ankle feel better. I got on my bicycle and pedaled mostly with the good leg. The few tears still on my eyelashes evaporated as I rode. I realized I would live. I did nothing fancy on the way home. No figure eights, no wriggling, wiggling of the handlebars, no hands in my pockets, no closed eye movements. Then. The sudden bark of a dog scared me, and my pants leg fed into the chain, the bike coming to a me an immediate stop. I tugged at the cuff, gnashed and oil black until ripping sounds made me quit trying. I fell to the ground, bike and all, and let the tears lather my face again. I then dragged the bike home with the pants leg in the chain. There was nothing to do except lie in the dirt because mom saw me round the corner from Sarah Street. I lay down when she came out with the belt and I didn't blame the dog or that stupid rainbow. All right, so we've read the story and if you need to, you can go back and you can read it again. Um, or <coughs> God bless me, ah, you can listen to it again. All right, so I want you to look at this. This is what you're going to be completing today. Slide two. All right, so look at the, look at the mat mentor text, the bike. Then fill in the boxes with the examples from the text showing how the author fulfilled each personal narrative criteria. All right, it focuses on just one event or experience. Yeah, it was right after this boy learned to ride his bike, he wasn't supposed to go around the corner. It focused on that, okay? Does it contain dialogue between characters? Yes, it does. And I want you to look at this, all right? Um, we don't want diary of the dialogue. We don't want it getting messy. You can see that this writer used it in two places. He used it to talk to the little boy on the tricycle and he used it um, when the little boy talked back to him. Did it hurt? And he said no. Okay. So we don't want to go overboard with the dialogue. All right. Does this make readers want to know what happened? Absolutely. When I got to the part with uh, the rainbow, I could tell, and especially when they talk, talked about um, his devilish horns, that he was going to do something that might get him in trouble. And I wanted to see if my prediction was right. Okay. So I want you to look and think about it. it may not be the hook may not be at the beginning. It was very, very descriptive at the beginning. And we talked, I talked with some of you about your prompts. Some, sometimes we can jump right into the action. All right. This author didn't do that. All right. I also want you to find engaging voice. Maybe you saw figurative language in there that you thought was really good. This writer really showed the reader what was happening. He didn't come out and say, hey, this is about the time after I learned to ride my bike and I got in trouble because I didn't listen to my mom. He showed you this, okay? That's what I want you to keep in mind. If you have to come right out and tell the person this is what you're writing about instead of showing them, you're not doing your job as a writer. All right, and the last thing, 
why do you think the author wrote about this personal narrative? Now think about the notes that I gave you. Why would this writer have chosen this? All right. If you have any questions or you need anything, please reach out to me. You are going to be filling in page two, the narrative reflection today for your writing. I want you to be thinking about experiences. Keep thinking about that. You might even want to start writing a list so that when we get to the brainstorming part, you're ready for that. All right. Have a good day, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Please don't.